computer. Let us pray. Father, good night, Lord. Good morning. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together again, for providing your word, for listening to our prayers, for giving us the faith, the assurance, and the comfort that you answer. We lift up Gina's friend and her daughter, Lord, who mourned the, the death and passing of her son-in-law and husband. Father, may they look to you for peace and comfort that only you can provide in times like these. Father, you know Nikki's situation and we pray that you would resolve the situation for her and that you would provide employment for her in the near future, Jesus. Touch down her with your healing hand and restore her to good health, Lord. We lift up Sue as she had this appointment on Monday, Lord, and you would guide the doctors who would be taking care of her. They would be diligent and accurate in all that they do, and, they, and the procedure will be successful. Jesus. Father, our world is in turmoil. There is so much killing and war and un that's so unnecessary, Lord. Father, may all your people come to know you. May your peace be in this world. And may we who know you be a source of peace to those around us, Jesus. May your light shine through us. May we receive your blessing so that we will bless others, Lord. And as we are about to study the fourth beatitude, open our hearts and our minds so that your word will be clear to us and we will be obedient to your word, Lord. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, our team song, right? Yeah. Right. Team song, yeah. All right. Team song. <laughs> when upon life's pillows you are tempest tossed.
All right, welcome Beatrice, and I hope you didn't break any limits. We made it, we made it. Okay. Hi. Yeah, what are, okay. Um, between both of you, Sharon and Beatrice, Matthew chapter five, one to 13, one of you read six verses and the other one reads seven verses. That's the, the Beatitudes. Okay. So I'll start off. If you wish. Okay. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and perse perse persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. 12 also. He's muted, you are muted. Myself, yeah. So we are in the fourth beatitude today. Somebody tell us what the first beatitude is. What's the first beatitude? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit for? For there is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what's our understanding of blessed that we've shared in the past couple of weeks? What's our understanding? Will somebody remind us? Yeah. When we say blessed, what do we Christians really mean? It means we are separated from the world and closer to Jesus. Amen. 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 You see, the world thinks about <laughs> blessing that, oh, well, I get a, a financial gift or I, I, have a new, I get a new home or a new car. These are, and these are all needed things. Don't get me wrong. We need these things. But a deeper meaning of blessed is to be separated from sin and be closer to the Lord. To me, that was a revelation. When I first started you know, studying the, the Beatitudes and it makes too much sense. Blessed, be separated from this, the sins of this world and be closer to Jesus. And then we said that Every beatitude has two, two sections. Anybody would like to share with us what the two sections are? The first one starts with C. It's a... Uh,
What are the two sections of each be beatitude? The first one, the first section. When it says blessed are you have the consequences, you have the consequences of like you have the first part and then you have the consequences or the um reward for um if you are poor in spirit and you have the consequence, what will happen? Your reward and blessed are those who mourn, and you know, the, 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 but it's divided, it's really divided into two. And the first part is talking about the attitude or the beatitude, and the second part is your reward. All right, let me remind you take notes. <laughs> the two sections. The first section is the condition you are meek. You mourning, that's the condition, the situation that you are in. And the second is the result of the blessings. The result of the blessings. No longer mourning. No longer, you're still meek, but you're blessed. So remember, condition, blessing. Condition, result. Okay? Do, that's the, the two sections of each beatitude. So what was the second beatitude? Result. Oh. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And where does the, our comfort come from? Or who uh, gives us this comfort? Only the Lord. Only the, Lord. the Lord. His comfort. I mean, we can help others. Remember, we said when we are mourning, especially for like the dead people will come and they will stay with us, they will sit with us, they will, but then they leave and they have to go, they go back to their own home. But our Father never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. He never leaves us. So hold on to that. And no matter what's going on, He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And Last week, what did, was the third beatitude? The meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek, blessed are the meek. And what did we say about meekness? What, what does that mean? Gentleness. Gentleness. Gentleness, which is a fruit of the spirit. So you see how the word complements the word and doesn't contradict? Gentleness, kindness, you know, empathy, caring. For they shall inherit the earth. Okay, any other, anything happened this past week that you say, so I am blessed? Or you got an opportunity to show meekness to somebody? Anybody? I'm blessed to have Nikki with me, Nicolette. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blessed to be home. Yeah, right. Yep. I am blessed to have a wonderful friend like Beatrice mm -hmm. who has been uh, very caring and entertaining for me since I've been here in Trinidad. And um, I thank God for her friendship. Amen. 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 Okay. So we're going to go into the. I say I'm very blessed um, to have a son like Jared. He's oh. always he's my only only one, and so I I he's my everything. So I'm blessed. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's going to see the same, same thing I... of having a mother like Sue. She's a great mom. I am blessed <laughs> to have a friend like Sharon because yes. Sharon is a. Is a a light spirited person and she makes you feel happy just to be around in the home, you know? Yeah, and I'm blessed to have all of you in my life because mm -hmm. to be honest with you, 15, 20 minutes ago, I was not feeling good. <laughs> but right now I'm feeling on top of the world. So. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody read the Ford Beatitude again for us. Matthew chapter five verse six. Blessed are those blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 
for they will be filled hunger and thirst for righteousness how do you feel when you're hungry your stomach hurts <laughs> yeah your stomach hurts yes and, and when you feel thirsty how do you feel Oh, dry mouth. Dry, your throat is dry. And what do you want to do? Drink. Eat and drink. Get something to eat and, and drink. Right? And you, know, be I, you know, some of us people like us who if we don't eat on time, <laughs> we get nauseous. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you feel like if you want to faint, kind of deal. I don't know if I ever told you, but once I was driving. And I start getting the symptoms and I'm thinking, I'll get home in time. I'll get home and keep going. You know, I blacked out while oh. driving. Oh. And by God's grace and his miracle and his protection, he woke me up. Oh. And, and there was a traffic light, like oh. about 100 yards, and the traffic had stopped. I was in the left lane. I was going like about 50, 55 miles an hour. And I just instinctively turned to the right. And by his grace, nothing was coming in the right lane. Wow. I never forget that. And every time I pass by that spot, I say, thank you, Jesus. So can I, can I tell you what I do when I have to drive? I always have, you know, oh, in some bars, you know, like those crunchy bars and so on. <laughs> and I always have something to drink in the car. I am yeah. mindful of my state. And I... <laughs> <laughs> those things ready a snack and something to drink i know buddy but i was not going far i was just going it don't matter <laughs> but I've learned, matter. I've learned i've learned i've learned i always yeah. have some candy or something and and a bottle of water in the car i've learned yeah. i've learned my lesson yeah so these are natural feelings of hunger and thirst and when we think about hunger and thirst, we think about the physical things that satisfy our hunger and thirst, like food, you know, and drink water. I know Donna don't drink any white rum, so I guess she only drinking water or, <laughs> or Coke kind of deal. So, but what are some other than food? Is there anything else that we hunger for? A closer relationship with the Lord. A closer relationship. All right, Jerry. Anybody else? Is there anything else you hunger for? You long for? Let me use a different word here. You long for? You love. wish you had? Love. You long for love. You love for who? You want somebody. Oh, you could I for go that path. Wait, Jerry, wait, wait. Jerry, let Donna finish, please. Okay. Sorry. You, so, um, you, it's okay. Love from your family or love from a partner or love from your colleagues or that sort of thing. You, 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 you love slash caring, love slash care. Okay. Yeah? All right, Jerry. Yeah, so that I, I, I think, um, you see, I, I'm having this bright light behind Donna and that's why I can <laughs> make her out. Um, so love of family. Well, yeah. I already mentioned the love of lo the Lord, eh? love yeah. of family. Yeah. Other love than of... the love of the Lord, what else do you long for? We'll get there. Companionship. Okay. Anybody else? What do you long for? What do you hunger for? Are you, you got everything? You don't have anything that you would like? Life is perfect, right? I or just, just pretend, or, I, or you're just pretending. I I I feel that um loving Jesus and I I feel fulfilled and um the Holy Spirit guides me and I don't I'm just I, I hunger for the Lord and I know He's with me. So I don't hunger for anything else. Whatever I get that is fun or nice is I thank the Lord and I thank God for those things or would you know we go on a trip or we but I don't hunger for anything else than just to know that the Lord loves me and is there for me. 
I, I can't think of what do you, you think of it? I mean, I would say like something silly, like uh, for someone to be back from the dead, like I wish my grandfather was alive, like a hunger for that. Like I wish that so much, but that would be, it's, it's out of the, it, I know it's impossible, so it's not a reality. But you know that one day, you will see him. You will meet again in heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. And, I'm, and I, I imagine right now, Nikki, you're looking for a job and that's something you, you know, you're hungry for, mm. for, for a, a job, which and the Lord will provide. Give us this day our daily bread. Anybody else? I think I would say I, I always want to, I always, I'm always concerned about, am I doing the, the right thing? Am I doing, am I walking where God wants me to walk? Yeah, um, yeah I think that's it. Um, I'm never, sometimes I feel like, okay, I want to, I think I am, but I'm not certain. Yeah. Yeah, and we all go through that if we, you know, we, nobody's perfect and we all have those concerns. But, and that leads right us into the next question. What is righteousness? Because this beatitude said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. What is righteousness? In your mind. It's having a right relationship with God. And what is that? Give me more. Tell me more about that. One based on faith, one based on trust, and one based on love. Okay. Anybody else? In your mind, what's your understanding of righteousness? Our God is righteous. God is righteous. Mm -hmm. we, we, we should follow his words. Which is right or which is wrong? Uh, so our guy, what is righteousness means? Uh, which is good? Which is uh, bad? So our God is our God judge, judge our God. Our, our God sees uh, which is right or which is wrong. So this called righteous. So we should also uh, seek which is right, which is wrong. So we should uh, find out that uh, which is uh, which is right or which is wrong inside of God. So we should follow that. Uh, uh, it is called righteousness. This is my tradition. That's all right. That's all right. Thanks. When we say seek after righteousness, and it has to do with obedience to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus. When we obey him, we are righteous in his sight. And righteousness, you know, in his sight, not the world. Because sometimes the world will tell you to do things and in there, that is great. But it's against the will of the Lord. I know I have, in my when I was much younger, I have succumbed to my friends tell me, that's okay, man, you can do that. It's okay to get a little high and, you know, hurting anybody kind of deal. And then before, have you heard, it's just a little white light. That's the, but in the eyes of the Lord, there's no little lie or little sin. A sin is a sin in his eye, in his eyesight, in his way. Can you see that? Would you agree with that? Hello? Am I losing you? No, we are listening to you, sir. No, I'm okay. following you. I'm following but, but you. But I, I need some, do you agree with it? Yeah. Yes. So, and the Lord has given us specific guidelines, specific guidelines. And, and Reverend Joseph told us, Jesus alone is righteous. Remember, that's why he had to come. The Lord couldn't find any other person to, to be sacrificed perfect, you know, for our sins. That's why Jesus, he was the only one, the only righteous one. So that leads us into our righteousness is in his righteousness is infused into us when we accept him as Lord and Savior. His righteousness is infused into us 
when we accept him as Lord and Savior. So when they, when they look down from heaven and they look at you and me, they don't see our sins. They see Jesus, our intercessor. Would they see his righteousness and they don't see our unrighteousness. And that's why we stand, he stands between us and the judgment. Do you believe that? That's yeah. our only hope. Our only hope. That's how we inherit the earth. Because of him and what he did, not what we do. Not what we do, but what he has already done. Divine Again, mercy. Divine. Yes. Divine mercy. Yes. So. What is our source of righteousness again? Obey the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is our source. You know, when we when we hungry, we want food. We might go to a restaurant. That's a source of the food. Or we go to the supermarket. We buy the food, kind of deal, and the drink. That's the source of that physical satisfaction to that type of hunger and thirst. But for righteousness, we got to go to Jesus. For righteousness, we got to go to Jesus. And he said, ask and you shall receive. We ask Good night, answers. everyone. Good night, Andrea. Welcome. How are you Good feeling night, tonight? Andrea. Good night. I'm in bed tonight. <laughs> okay, I'm thank and we, we're happy to have you with us and feel free to chime in at any time. Okay, so, thanks. How do you feel? How do you feel when you are filled with righteousness? And if you look at the fruit of the, the spirit, is anything evil in any one of those fruit? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, faithfulness. No, not, nothing evil, nothing evil. No, it's all good, it's all righteous. When we practice those things, we are righteous in the eyes of the Lord, but we gotta be filled from him. He is the supply. He's he is the our, supply. And he's filling our spirit, our soul. Yeah. That's because. Okay. Yeah, God is the God is the spirit, a spirit. We must worship him, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, what what did Jesus tell Satan when Satan was tempting him, and he said, "Because remember, Jesus had fasted for forty days and forty nights." Right? So what do you think he was feeling at that time? Hungry and, and thirsty. Hungry and, and thirsty. Right? And, and what did the Satan tempt him? He said, well, you the Lord. Turn the stone into bread. You can tell the stone turn into bread. What did Jesus tell him? Man shall not live by bread alone, but oh, by every word, word that comes from the mouth of God. God. And that's where we get our righteousness from, by the word that comes from the Lord. So, going back to that question, what does it mean to, to hunger and thirst? Um, Donna, would you read Psalm 73, verse 25 for us? I remember last week I suggested that you all get a, a bookmarker and mark your verses so it's easy to find. Okay, Donna. Yeah. yeah. Whom? A reading from Psalm 73, verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there's none upon earth that I desire besides you. So, so when the Beatitudes said, blessed and they that hunger and thirst, the hunger and thirst for Jesus. Hunger and thirst for Jesus, for you. For you. And then Reverend Joseph, Isaiah 26, verse 9. Yes, sir. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. My soul yearns for you. This is not just a superficial feeling. It's a deep, Deep feeling, yearning 
for the Holy Spirit, yearning for the Holy Spirit. And that's what Isaiah, we, we know we need to follow his example. My soul yearns for the Holy Spirit. And Jerry, Luke 6, Luke 6, 21. So can I give a little introduction? Can I stop you? Well, You're going to do it anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so the Beatitudes is also found in Luke's Gospel. And what I'm reading here is one of the Beatitudes. And uh, in Matthew's Gospel, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. In Luke's Gospel, it's called the Sermon on the Plain. And this is the reading of Luke 6, 21. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. The key word there is now, in the moment. In the moment, every moment. Life is made up of moments. The moment, the moment is gone, it's gone. You can't go back and get it in the moment. And the thing about our Lord, we don't have to go to a special place or wait on a special time to reach out to him. We can reach out to him. We can call upon him from anywhere at any time. And he hears us and he listens to us now in the moment. And then Gina, First Peter 2.2. 2. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk so that through it you may grow into salvation. Can you remember mothers <laughs> when your baby was hungry, how much how they come out crying, they will cry until you put that bottle or that nipple in your mouth. <laughs> and then there's totally, they go from one extreme of crying and now they're getting what they were yearning for and crying for, and it's like peace in the house. <laughs> Can you remember that, girls? Yes. When when Jared was one year old and and Sharon, you had and everybody who had babies remembered those times. And when they get what they want, you see, that's the right the, the inherit the earth. When we get what we we hunger and thirst for. We have peace and comfort and quiet in the place. And that, that was Gina, right, Gina? Nikki? Yes. My soul oh. thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? Just Psalm 42, friends, brothers and sisters. I would recommend that you read this, you pray this psalm. Don't read it, pray this psalm every day. My soul thirsts for you. When shall I come and be with you? You know, it's as the King James Version, I like the King, you say, as the deer at the heart panted after the water, so panted my soul after thee. It's a deeper yearning. Panted, yearning. And then Jared, Psalm 63, verse 1. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. And this world is a dry and parched world right now. And only the love and righteousness of the Lord can save us and give us hope and peace to inherit this earth. Sue, so, Psalm 143, verse 6. I stretch out my hands toward you, my soul to you, like a Parched land. You know, when he said I stretched forth my hands, I, I remember that miracle 
when when Jesus healed the man with the shriveled hand, and he tell him stretch forth your hand. He didn't say why. He didn't say, well, I've never done this before. I can't do this. He did as he was told. And he obeyed the Lord as he was told and he was healed. And you know, the stretching forth of your hand is a signal. I'm ready to receive you, Father. I'm ready to receive you. Fill me up. Fill me up. My All of me yearns for you. Fill me up. You cannot grab anything with your hand folded like this. Can you? Or behind your back? No. Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. Hartley, Amos 8.11. Unmute, unmute Hartley. Amos 8, 11. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Sometimes I feel as if that time has come. People don't want to hear the word. Look at what's happening in schools. They don't want to pray in schools anymore. They want, to, they want to take down in God we trust the signs. When I was working in the corporate world, I got in trouble a lot a couple of times when I referred to Jesus or I quoted the Bible. I had to explain to my bosses, what's in me is what's going to come out, I'm sorry. But these times are so, you know, people are, we who know Jesus, but those people who don't know him are not even aware of a, their, that hunger and thirst. They're hungering and thirsting for worldly material things, you know? But we know our hope is we will be filled. Our hope is that we will be filled. So let's not wait. Let's hunger and thirst now in the moment. Can you make a resolution to do that? The hunger and thirst after the, Lord, the word of the Lord now in the moment? You see, the, the thing about it is uh, in the world today, a lot of people wait until things go wrong or until it's broken and then they try to fix it. And sometimes it's too late, but we have the word. And now the word is telling us, blessed are the day that hunger and thirst after righteousness, but they shall inherit the earth now in the moment, in the moment, not next year. Not 10 years from now, not tomorrow, but now, now. So righteousness, I looked up the dictionary meaning for righteousness and it says acting in accord with divine or moral law. And we know when they refer to say divine, it means the Holy Spirit, moral law, free from guilt or sin, morally right, or justifiable, making a righteous decision, arising from an out, outraged sense of justice or morality, righteous indignation. And you know when you're doing the right thing, even if it hurts. You know when you're doing the, it's the right thing, even when it's hurt. Righteousness in the eyes, according to the will of the Holy Spirit. So obeying God's commandments, pleasing him in thought, word, and action. And our blessing is they shall be filled. Donna, Psalm 17, verse 15, please. I'm reading from Psalm 17, verse 15. He told me verse 11. 
Verse 15, sorry. I'm so sorry. Psalm 17, verse 11. Verse yeah. 15. Verse 15. Okay. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake in your likeness. I'll read it again. As for you, as for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. That's our her inheritance. We will see God face to face one day. One day. We will be one with him. And then, Reverend Joseph, Psalm 63, verse 5. Yes, sir. My soul will be satisfied, yes, with the rich, richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. My soul, not my belly, not my tongue, my throat, but my soul. I'll never forget, I went to a seminar um, that um, Dr. Ravi Zacharias was the speaker. He made a statement. I'll never forget the statement. It was so true. He said, you do not have a soul. You are a soul. You do not have a soul. You are a soul. I wish you would write that down. And always remember, you do not have a soul. You are a soul. It's the soul that goes to heaven when we leave this earth. It's the soul. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. The soul goes to heaven. So Lincoln. Yes, sir. In Genesis chapter 1, it states, after God created or fashioned man out of the dust of the earth, God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. It's not referring to any part of his body. It refers to the fact that a human being with God's breath in him has become a living soul. So, so thank, you for that, thank you for confirming that statement. Yeah, that is thank what Zacharias you. was preaching on. Thank you, Jerry. And now would you read Psalm 103, verse 5 for us? Sure. So this is the Lord we are speaking about, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And we know that famous passage that says, all good things come from the Lord. Lord, those who believe in him, all good things come from him. So when we turn after him, good things come. The, when the, the physical hunger and physical thirst is temporarily satisfied, but the spiritual and the righteousness is permanent. That comes from the Lord. Gina, Isaiah 58, verse 11, please. Who did you dread and fear that you told lies? And me, you did not remember nor take to heart. Am I to keep silent and conceal while you show no fear of me? What does it mean to fear the Lord? Anybody? What does it mean to fear the Lord? For me, yeah. it's respect, more respect. Respect, and... yeah. You see, a lot of people confuse that word with afraid and scared. It's a little different here. Fear, respect, fall down on your knees, bow down before him. He doesn't want to scare us. You know, he's not a ghost. He's not a scarecrow. He's God, loving and caring God. But he said, honor, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. I, I think the Gandhi fear is you must know how awesome and how great God is. Amen. And how powerless we are. And, yeah. and, and in yeah. that realm, in that realm, you, you fear the Lord because he can do anything. Nothing is too difficult 
for him to do. Meanwhile, we are powerless. We can do nothing without him. So is in that that whole um, scenario there, to me, that is what you have to say, fear of the Lord. Yeah? Yeah, and when uh, Jerry reminded us that he poured his power into us. But to receive that, we got to get plugged into him. Blessed are those who seek after righteousness. We got to plug in to the righteousness. Yeah, but they are, seek it. Sorry. There are also one or two times in the New Testament when fear also means to be afraid. You remember the angels appearing to the shepherds on the hillside? Yeah, but this we're talking, Jerry, we're talking about the Lord, not the angels. Because the that was angels. a phenomenal thing for them. They had never seen them before. And so they said, fear not. Yeah. No, because I just they, wanted to add. They I just have never to add seen that. that before. And you see, we've got to be very careful that we don't confuse fear of the angels and the appearance and the light, bright light with Jesus. We're talking here about Jesus, our God. And uh, Nikki, Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Yeah, again, the difference. To get food for the physical body, you better have some money yeah. to pay for it and the drink. But for righteousness, it's freely given. Freely given. Come. The Lord is inviting us to come. Feed on him. Righteousness. And Jared, John 4, 14, please. Mm -hmm. But whoever drinks the water I, I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. And again, this water is not H2O, hydrogen oxide. This is a spiritual water. This is a spiritual water that comes from Jesus. We will never thirst. Sue, John 7, 37, please. Mm -hmm. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and explained, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. And you shall be satisfied. Anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. You know, and I think about that thief on the cross next to Jesus who said, remember me when you get into your paradise. What a, a, a even in the last moment, reach out to the Lord, hunger and thirst for him even in that last moment. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in prayer. You will be satisfied. Ask and you shall receive. And then that famous verse that we all know, and who would like to just repeat it for us? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. You see, if we are hunger for food and thirst and we don't get it, we will perish eventually if we never get it. The body can only last so long. I can't remember the, the scientific facts of how long the body can do without water. Anybody know? Three days, four days, seven days? Google it. <laughs> and, but there is a time when the body will just collapse, when it doesn't get nutrition, physical nutrition and, and water. But the body filled with the Holy Spirit, the soul will never fall, will never fail, live forever. So Hunger and thirst that we're talking about tonight is not something we wait for or happens to us when we stop. This is a hunger and thirst that we, we initiate, we seek 
This is something we do. God takes care of the rest. We got to ask him. We got to reach. We got to see. Seek it out. And he takes care of the rest. So before I share my surprise with you, anybody have any thoughts they like to share with us? My thought about um, how I am fulfilled and, and through my loss of my husband this past year was through pr prayer and to knowing that I can't do it without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit guiding me. And so I, that's why I, I feel like I don't hunger, I, I hunger for Jesus, but I pray that it fulfills me. And so I pray every day and I, I just feel that that's what I, I get. I want to be kind to, I'm more kind to others. I, you know, I, I feel for others and we're um love love is so important so many are lacking love so I feel like for me this past year not having my husband um we were so close him and I we loved each other so much we were together every day all the time and for me not to be him I totally gave myself more to Jesus um although I loved Jesus before I loved my husband I was in mm. love with Jesus before I met my husband 15 years ago. And I loved Jesus 15 years ago. I would sing songs and think of Jesus when I sang them. So then with my husband, uh, you know, it turned, it was him. Of course, Jesus always in our lives, our faith. And, but without my husband, it was back to being fulfilled by Jesus, letting the Holy Spirit guide me. And that has been my saving grace in life. You know, Amen. Uh, Amen. And thank God you knew to go to him. Yes. And you could, and you could depend on him. Yes. You knew him. Anybody yes. else have any thoughts they'd like to share? Before we, I share my surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, you want to say something? No, not at this time. <laughs> All right. I was not going to ask about your surprise, but it's a good thing you're doing it in the end because I say as though you have forgotten. No, I said I will have you so I haven't forgotten. I like to keep my promises, you know. <laughs> okay. The surprise for you, and I want you to enjoy this. I was surfing the internet and I came across this song, and it had become one of my favorite songs. It, it, it just light you up and set you on fire. And, and I hope you will stand up, stand up and, in, and enjoy this. Don't, don't just sit down, all right? <laughs> Here we go. Yes, uh. Again? Uh -huh. that is it. Yay! <laughs> That's my song. That's what happened to it? That is Sharon's song. <laughs> no, no, come on now, take it off. Come on. <laughs> What's going on here? Come on. Hold on, let me go back here a little bit. Yeah. Oh, man. Judy oh, man. oh, here we go. Behold.
Yay. <laughs> what a song. What a song. Oh. How do you like it? Lifted up by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh. That was my surprise for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes, and I hope did. you feel on fire. I hope you feel filled with his righteousness. Salvation has come. Yep. Salvation has come. It is finished. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for filling us with your righteousness, Lord. And Father, we pray that we would resist the temptation to judge other people and to find fault in other people. <laughs> that we would share your righteousness with other people. That we will lead other people who don't know you yet, Lord, to come and receive your righteousness, Jesus. Bless us, Lord. Give us peace and comfort as we go to our restful time. And when tomorrow comes, Lord, may we walk like you, next to you, like you, obeying you, and may your light shine through us, Lord, so people will see others. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us and dying on the cross for us. We pray this in your holy and precious name, believing, Lord, that you have heard us and that you answer. Thank you, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right.